and welcome back to another session of first aid yes 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 dear children we were discussing about the various first aid given during various accidents and out of which we were done with the scratches and wounds yes you have learned what type of first aid to be given while you have got some wound or scratches yes i have told you what to do during the first aid what to give first aid during an wound or a scratch and i even ask you to prepare a first aid box yes are you it your job of preparing first aid yes continue the job of doing a and preparing a first aid box yes let's move on to the next category of accidents that is broken bones yes it's terrible broken bones so what type of first aid to be given if a person is suffering from broken bone or a or having a fracture yes how many of you have undergone the pain of fracture and how many are not and those who have not undergone any kind of fracture then pray god that you have not experienced the deadly pain of having a fracture so so what type of first aid to be given in case you have broke your hand or leg yes so what is it what is broken bone so what is a fracture actually let me first tell you what is a fracture fracture is actually what a bad accident yes whenever a bad accident happen leading to a crack in the bone when there is a crack in a bone you means that this is a fracture yes 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 it's a fracture when there is a crack in a bone it's nothing but a fracture yes so when it it may cause due to very very bad accidents yes so a bad accident can cause a crack cause a crack in the bone this is called a fracture so what is a fracture a bad accident can cause a crack in a bone which is called as a fracture and dear children this fracture is extremely painful and there is uh, there is nothing we can do to help that fractured person yes we cannot help it yes only a doctor can look after a fracture we can't the only thing what we can do is to make the patient still make the patient sit in a still positions yes and we help the only help we can give is to making sure that the part of the body that is fractured is not moved we should make sure that the part which is being fractured is not moving it's in a proper still position yes we should can we should do that actually yes and rather than that we can't do anything a doctor has to attend it immediately yes the only thing we can do is to give support to not to move the fractured part of the body yes that thing we can do in case uh, in case suppose uh, the leg the hand is fractured what we can do is to prepare a sling what is a sling a sling is made up of a cotton cloth you have seen yes just like this it's around the neck and it is tied to the hand so that the fractured bone or the fractured part cannot move yes that we can do we can prepare a sling so that the fractured part of the body cannot move or the fractured part of the hand is in a still position yes that we can do in case if it's a leg we should make sure that the leg should not move you should give support you should give support so that the fractured leg is not moving yes that we can do yes and the next important thing you have to immediately rush to the doctor and a doctor can do whatever whatever first aid he can give only we can't do anything and if you are going for a trained professional he will put a splint what is a splint dear children what is a splint it's a splint is actually a piece of wood or a piece of plastic yes or a piece of uh, paper that is kept on the either side of the fractured bone to support the fractured part so that so that the fractured part will not move that 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 can be done only by trained professional not anybody can do this yes strapping the splint can be done under 
and uh, can be done by your uh, trained professional or by a doctor but we can't give do that we can only give the support not to move the fractured part that's a, that's the first aid we can give but a trained professional will strap a splint yes and what is a splint it's a piece of wood or a paper or a cloth which is kept on the either side of the fractured leg so that it will not move it takes a time to heal that fracture yes so be careful while playing games or uh, be uh, careful while climbing up the stairs yes so or else you can meet with a bad accidents you get your legs or hands fractured and we don't want to suffer from such extreme pain yes so if if it happens to your friend or anybody near you what you have to do you have to give support so that the fractured bone is not is not moving yes it's flexible it's still in position and immediately you have to take it to a trained professional for strapping a splint yes this is this type of first aid can be given to a patient who is suffering from a fracture yes actually it's an extremely painful situation okay now let's move on to the next type of accident that is sprain yes that is sprain we all we all came across with a sprain while playing games yes while playing games children sometimes you twist your ankle sometimes you twist your wrist yes or no and unfortunately we met with an accident yes it may have it may happen in your neck in your wrist in your back in your ankles it's twisting of the bone while playing or doing some other activities yes when do we get sprain while playing or some doing some uh, outdoor activities yes what is a sprain the twisting of the joints what is a sprain twisting of a joint and you get extreme pain yes if you are playing in the garden and suddenly your ankle get twisted what happens you have to face a loads of pain or not it's, it's extremely painful so in such cases in such situation what we should do how to treat the sprain yes first thing to reduce the swelling we should give an ice pack we should keep an ice pack to reduce the swelling of the sprain yes first first thing what we have to do what we have to do we have to keep an ice bag to reduce the swelling due caused due to sprain yes that we can do and second thing you have to be in a still position you should keep, you should keep your twisted part in a still position you should not move it and the best way to heal that uh, twist is to tie a elastic bandage you might have seen it's somewhat orange brown in color yes you can tie an elastic bandage over the twisted part yes to heal up soon actually it takes few days to heal but tying a elastic elastic bandage will do wonders yes so in case of spray what is a spray twisting of the twisting of the joints it can happen anywhere neck wrist ankle backbone yes twisting may occur so at that time the immediate action the immediate first aid what you have to give you have to put an ice bag to reduce the swelling yes and the second thing tying of an elastic bandage yes until the until the what the spray spray is healed yes this is what the first aid you can give during sprain the next accident and the next type of first aid is given during your burns yes during your burns i told you it's very dangerous and deadly situation while you are burning a matchstick or while you are burning a fire crackers you may get hurt you may get burn if you are not under adult supervision yes it may happen in your kitchen even yes it may happen in your kitchen so it can leads to the death of the person so what we can do to avoid such situation remember one thing children the burns may be minor burn or major burns yes for minor burns we can give first aid but for major burns we can't do anything a doctor has to look after it we can't do anything for a major burns 
we can give first aid only for minor burns. That how can you know that it's a minor burn and it's a major burn? Whenever, whenever there is a burn, if there is simply redness over it, if you get burn, if only redness is there, then that is considered as minor burn. Yes, if there is only redness and no blisters are there. What do you mean by blisters? Some small swellings are there. Yes, you might have seen. Yes, small swellings, that is called blister. If only redness is there and no blisters are there, then it is called as your minor burns. And what to do in case of minor burns? First thing, you have to wash it with cold water to make comfortable. Yes, the very first thing, the very first aid in case of minor burn is to wash it with cold running water. And once you are done with it, make it dry and put an antiseptic cream. Yes, that will help a lot. In case of your minor burns, what first aid you have to give? Clean it with cold water, make it dry and put some antiseptic ointment. It will heal very soon. Yes, but what if in case it's a major burn? What if in case it's a major, major burn? Then what you will do? Yes, and how can you know that it's a major burn? If its redness is there and blisters are there. Yes, if the part which burned has redness over it and blisters over it, then what we can do? We can't do anything. The doctor will do. The only thing we can do is to prevent the blisters from brushing. Yes, we should make sure that the blisters should not collapse. The blisters should not break. The blisters should not brush. Yes, and even though, even though the blisters brushed, then what we should do, what type of first aid we can give? We can wash it with your running cold water and putting an antiseptic cream and tying a bandage. That's, that's what we can do. And you have to rush to a doctor. Yes. So in case of still major burns caused by firecrackers or some petrol burning or immediately you have to rush your doctors. And, and one thing we can help them is to to make sure that the person is drinking enough water to calm down, to calm down the person from getting panic. We keep, we, we should give enough water to drink to keep him hydrated. Yes, that thing we can do. And it, the rest all will be done by the doctors. We can't do it. So for minor burns, wash it off and put an antiseptic. And for the major burns, if there is blisters, the immediate action is to cleaning it with water and putting a antiseptic and bandage. If still it's a major burns, immediately rush to the doctor. Yes. So next thing, this is what we can do during in case of your minor and major burns. Now let's move in case of your fire. In case there is a fire, what we can do? Yes. Let's see what we can do in case it gets burning. Children, in case there is a severe fire, then what to do? What type of first aid we can do there? Yes, so let's see one by one what we can do to stop the fire. The first thing, after lightening a fire, make sure that the matchstick is completely extinguished. Yes, to make sure that it's completely extinguished before throwing. Suppose you throw it in a dustbin. Yes, and what if, if there is a paper there, then it may catch fire and leads to a disaster. So make sure that the match stake is completely turned off before throwing it into the bin or else it may catch fire. What is the second step we can do? Store the kerosene in airtight cans away from fire. Of course, store your kerosene, petrol in a very, very airtight container. Yes, so that, so that it can be stored properly and away from fire. Don't place it near your gas or near any fire equipment. Yes, try to store these things in an airtight container and away from fire. In case you don't know, whenever accidents can happen at any time. So always try to keep these things away from fire. 
What is the third thing we can do to prevent the fire? Make sure to switch off the LPG stove, your gas stove. Yes, make sure to switch off LPG stove when not in your use. If you are still smelling the gas, try to please open all the doors and windows and immediately contact a gas agency. So what else? Yeah, if 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 uh, if still you are smelling the gas, even though switching off the LPG gas, immediately go and open all the doors and windows. Yes, go and open all the doors and windows and call upon a gas agency to come home immediately and make the necessary arrangement to repair your gas stove. But don't forget to switch off the LPG gas cylinders and even, even also the regulators. Yes, so uh, next thing is to small children. Yes, you children. Don't ever dare to light the crackers without having any adults nearby you. Always take your adult supervisions. Yes, you don't know. Whenever it catches fire and you may get burns. So please my dear children, you and educate your nearby children not to light fire crackers without any adult supervisions. So these are some things we can do. It's in our hand. We need to be careful. Yes, we need to be careful. So in case, in case there is still, we never know now, even though we become cautious and careful, sometimes misfortune happens. So at such situation, what to do? Fire fighting. How we will fight with fire? Yes, how we will fight? Of course, the first option you have is your fire extinguisher. Yes, in almost you see in uh, halls, in schools, colleges, anywhere there is a red color fire extinguisher is there, cylinder is there. You all have seen. Yes, that is the most used equipment to, to stop the fire. Yes, you can use a fire extinguisher. What is there inside the fire extinguisher? Either carbon dioxide or sometimes foam to stop the spread of fire. Yes, the first thing what you can use, you can use a fire extinguisher. In case, suppose in case the fire is caught in an wood. Yes, in case of a wood or a paper, then you can use sand. Throw some sands over it and that will help you stopping the fire. Yes, in case, in case it is caused by wood or uh, your papers, then throw sand over it. Yes. And in case, in case, if it is due to kerosene or petrol, if a fire is caused due to petrol or kerosene, immediately you have to call the fire brigade. Yes, and they will come and help you in, help you in stopping the fire. For the time being, you can use sand to stop the fire if it is caused by your petrol or kerosene. Yes, what if? What if a person, a person gets uh, gets the burn? Yes, if a person is suffering from fire, then try to wrap that person with blanket or through sand. Yes, that is another step you can do. And if a fire is caused by electricity, don't do the mistake of throwing water in it because you may get electric shock. Don't throw water in case of fire due to electricity. Yes, try, try, try to use a fire extinguisher or sand. Yes, how can you by using your fire extinguisher? By using uh, a blanket by wrapping over the over the person if it gets fire. You can use sand and in some cases water. But don't dare to throw water if it is in case of your petrol or electricity. Electricity, you can get the electrical shock. Yes, these are the preventive measures we can take to stop the fire. And don't forget to wear cotton clothes while you are in kitchen or while near fires. Always try to wear cotton, cotton clothes because nylon cloth catches fire very easily that you all know. Yes, these are some of the first aid and preventive measures we can take to stop fire. Now, what if, if an animal bites you? What if? If an animal bites you, what type of first aid we have to do? We have to take. In case of animal bites, it may be a dog, it may be a snake, it may be a monkey. 
So let's see what first aid to be given in case a man is bitten by a dog, bit dog by a dog or your uh, monkey. What you should do? The very first thing is to the place where the where the person is bitten by a uh, dog or your monkey wash it with water or antiseptic to remove all the saliva of the animal because the saliva of the animal contains number of germs and which may enter and you may get infection so first step is to wash the area bitten by the animal because of course when the animal is going to bite you its saliva will enter into your body and that saliva has come germs and that germs will lead to infection. The very first step is to clean the area with water or a shoe. Yes. And the second thing immediately rush to doctor. The doctor will give you an injection. And this is what we can do in case of bitten by dog. Because you know if dogs and other animals are biting you. You may get a disease called rabies. Yes, animal, when a person is bitten by an animal, he or me, she may get the disease called rabies. So make sure, wash it, wash the saliva because it contains germs and you may get infection. And rush to a doctor for immediate help. But in case if it's a snake bite, yes, what if in case of your snake bite, it's very poisonous. The poison enters your blood and it may lead to death of the person. So the place where the snake has bitten, yes, just above it, try to uh, try to wrap a cloth over it. So that the blood and the poison can slowly move into the heart. And another important thing is to keep your hand in a lower position to your heart. So that there will be no movement of the blood. Yes. Keep, it, keep the hands or the portion which is bitten by the snake in a lower position to your heart. Try a bandage just over it so there is no spread of poison. And immediately rush to the doctor to take the injections. This will prevent you from snake bite. Yes. Now the most and the most important thing is what type of carefulness we should obey while, while on road. Yes. You know these common things. Walk on the left side of the road. Zebra crossing. And the person should drive very safely. Don't drink and drive. Always follow the traffic rules. Yes. These things are common things which we need to follow. These are the rules and regulations to keep ourselves safe. Yes. Always look forward and backward if anything is coming to you or not. So do do follow all these first aids and keep yourself safe. Yes and nowadays please don't forget to wear a mask before heading out of the house. It's a must and compulsory thing nowadays. Since we are suffering, the whole world is suffering from the dreaded corona coronavirus. So dear children stay healthy, stay safe, learn the different first aid to be given in different situations. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy.